Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to start uh, this uh, presentation first uh, by extending the congratulations of the UNESCO IG to the new, newly formed uh, UNESCO Center in, uh, in Serbia, in Belgrade. Uh, knowing very well the capacity of, uh, of the people here, especially of the Institute Jaroslav Czerny, and especially the energy of, uh, of our host today, Professor Dimkic, uh, I'm more than sure that uh, this center will have a very, very bright future. And I hope that we are going to, to say, cooperate uh, even more in the future. Um, today, uh, my intention was to, to say, talk about the, some, uh, I would say, alternative approaches for a groundwater treatment. And basically, the excellent presentation of a previous speaker was a very nice introduction to what I'm going to, to tell. So I'm, I'm going to, to introduce you uh, some, some attractive techniques which are either uh, under development at UNESCO IG Institute in, uh, in Delft or are, say, coming from a Dutch water industry. Uh, the idea was to, to maybe first uh, say a few words about the uh, groundwater uh, as a source for drinking water production. I think uh, the previous speaker already uh, told more than enough, so I'll try to be here very short. Uh, also say groundwater quality problems were say, uh, very say, uh, uh, properly given and mentioned, so I can also save some time on that. Uh, I wanted to, to say a few words about the conventional treatment of groundwater, so how, how we do it uh, in most countries at present. And I would like to use this as a basis to maybe give some idea about the alternative approach, about the absorptive removal of groundwater. Now, I don't think that uh, for this uh, uh, audience I have to tell anything about the advantages of groundwater for uh, water production, for drinking water production. So I guess we are all aware about all these aspects. Um, also, I guess we have seen different, different slides showing the, the uh, usage of uh, groundwater for drinking water production in uh, different uh, countries, continents. Maybe here, just interesting to mention, since we are in uh, Serbia, part of the Danube River Basin, that about 60% uh, of population in this basin is uh, using groundwater as a say, source for a drinking water production. All in all, uh, almost 2 billion of people nowadays make use of groundwater as the main source for their drinking water production. Now, uh, groundwater quality problems, I guess uh, you heard enough. Uh, our part uh, of the research was focusing mainly geogenic uh, type of pollution, so basically the presence of uh, elevated uh, uh, concentration of metals in the groundwater, and also, say, organic matter uh, or, say, color. Now, how, how uh, we typically treat the groundwater? I guess uh, this is very simple and simplified uh, scheme known to all of you. Simple abstraction of groundwater, aeration, filtration, rapid sand filtration, Possibly one extra step of uh, aeration and filtration, for example, if ammonia is too high or if iron and manganese are very high. Now, this scheme is in some cases uh, changed or upgraded, under quotes, by, for example, providing or replacing aeration with the prechlorination. In some cases, also, uh, contact time is, uh, is provided uh, after the aeration uh, to provide better oxidation of metals like uh, iron. Now, if you have water which is more difficult, which has maybe also high organics, uh, high iron content, in some cases we see that the uh, scheme is more complex and implies uh, pre-oxidation, either chlorine or ozone or some other oxidant, coagulation, iron, aluminum salts, conventional flocculation, uh, sedimentation, separation, and then filtration. Now, what is, what is uh, the limitation of this type of uh, treatment schemes? Uh, they're they are okay, they're they are doing their job, but uh, basically in some cases it is not so easy to reach quality standards that we have to, to obtain, especially if composition of groundwater is complex. Um, to mention a few high manganese, uh, presence of, uh, of arsenic. <coughs> now, uh, in some cases, we use hazardous chemicals like uh, chlorine, uh, which is in a way a threat to public health. For some compounds, like for example, heavy metals and organics, 
efficiency is limited and not high enough. Uh, if you have metals which are complex, uh, iron, for example, manganese, which are in the complexes with organics, then this scheme is not always sufficiently efficient. pH has very high effect on the performance of this process. Also, say, applic application of oxidants, either ozone or chlorine, will result in formation of byproducts, so we, we have to take care about that. We get large volumes of uh, sludge, toxic in some cases, if you have, for example, arsenic in groundwater. And we have to waste quite some volume of water uh, for the, for example, backwashing of the filters uh, that have to be backwashed quite oftenly. Now, what is the alternative uh, that could be considered in some cases? There's the adsorptive filtration process. Uh, we can use either commercial adsorbents or we can use a uh, uh, natural one, or we can use byproducts from uh, some industries. Uh, the advantage of this process is that, especially for metals, we can reach much lower level of metals in the treated water. pH is uh, less critical for this process. For example, if you have a very low pH, oxidation of iron will not work very properly with oxygen. In this case, it will work even better. Now, this process can remove not, not only iron, uh, manganese, but also some other metals like copper, uh, lead, arsenic, uh, nickel, chromium. Typically, uh, adsorption is resulting in the low sludge production. And this is all basically reason that this process is getting more and more ground in different, say, countries, especially in Netherlands. Now, let's see a uh, few slides about the iron removal through uh, adsorptive, adsorptive approach. Now, I guess, the, what is the main difference? When you go for a conventional iron removal, we try to oxidize iron to create uh, iron-3 oxides that will, say, uh, form flocks. We try to separate them in a, in a filter. Now, if we have an adsorptive approach, then we try to remove iron as iron-2, as ferrous dissolve iron. And then the process will be based on the adsorption of such iron on the, on the grains, on the sand, and oxidation of adsorbed iron-2 on the, on, the, on the grains. I'll just show uh, one small animation. So you can see the iron, uh, ferrous iron, uh, the soil iron coming to the, to the filter, being attached on the, on the sand grains. Also, water contains some oxygen, and it will oxidize iron to attached. And you slowly get oxidation and formation of the iron three layer on the, on the sand grains. This layer is now getting even more efficient for a further absorption of the, of the iron. Now, uh, we should say that the basically absorptive iron removal is nothing new. Uh, it is a known process. It is a natural process which takes place basically also in the conventional aeration filtration if the conditions are appropriate. Uh, we also know that the, when we start with the new filter media, after some uh, days of operation, performance is getting better. Why is this? Because simply we get creation of the first iron oxide layers on the grains and we get better absorption. This process is sometimes called as catalytic iron manganese removal. And there is some confusion uh, in literature. We can discuss here a lot, but uh, biological iron removal is mainly, say, based on the absorption of the iron too on the, on the filter media. Now, what are the advantages of this approach? So first, uh, head loss development is much less. We know that the conventional aeration filtration, we have to backwash filters quite oftenly, once per day, or maybe in some cases even more often. Uh, iron levels that we can reach are typically lower than layer levels that we can reach in the conventional aeration filtration. And also there is a much shorter ripening period of filter after each backwashing. Now this approach will reduce sludge problems, sludge volumes, and also will uh, reduce frequency of backwashing, which is again saving and very important in the, in the present time when we have to take care about our resources. Now one example uh, from the uh, pilot in Netherlands where we try to use the same groundwater. And uh, in one case, we try to stimulate uh, flock formation, so aeration, flock formation. In the other, we try to reduce oxygen level and reduce contact time and get 
the flock, flock uh, uh, safe formation was minimal, so we get basically attractive viral removal. What you can see on this graph is that the head loss development, uh, the blue lines in the flock formation, is much, much faster. And that's typically what we know. Uh, after something like 24 hours, we have to decosh filter. We have head loss of about 2.5 meters. If you look now to the green line, where we stimulate absorption, you can see that the head loss was going, say, was growing much less, say, uh, intensively. And even after, after four days, we didn't have yet uh, uh, high enough head loss to backwash the filters. Now, I would like to show you some uh, results from uh, one pilot plant uh, that is now functioning as a full-scale plant for, uh, for a refugee camp in, in uh, Jordan. Groundwater uh, is, uh, in a way, interesting because of uh, very high iron. Uh, just take care that it was between 10 and even 64 milligram per liter. And the pH was uh, slightly acidic, so, which is very good for uh, absorptive iron removal. The rest was more or less say, uh, okay, there were no really problems, slightly increased uh, manganese. Now this is the pilot plant that you can see, simple cascade aeration and filtration. And uh, on this slide you can see the results of a filtrate. Um, what you can see here is that the levels of iron are very low. So uh, basically we feed uh, uh, iron that is above 10, in this case maybe even 16, 17 and we got the levels which are, say, below 0.1. If you now just look further to the red, red uh, say, markers, uh, we tried to further reduce the aeration process. In this way, we further stimulated uh, absorption, and you can see that the levels of the, of the uh, iron infiltrate were even lower. Uh, so they were, say, uh, below 0 0.05 without uh, any, say, complex treatment. Uh, by the way, this plant is now functioning as a full-scale plant for uh, 5,000 people, and uh, the backwashing frequency is once per 14 days. So that's how often they have to say backwash the filters, though the iron levels are above 10 uh, milligram per liter. Now a few words about the arsenic removal now. Now um, at UNESCO IHE, we have been working uh, some years on the uh, so-called IHE ADART uh, technology for arsenic removal based on the absorption. And the uh, process is based on the absorption of the arsenic on the uh, iron oxide coated sand. That's basically waste. That's a byproduct of a Dutch uh, drinking water industry. Once you treat groundwater with high iron, once you apply aeration, filtration with very short contact time, then you get, in a time, grow, growth of the, of the iron grains. And after some years, they have to be taken out of filter, so we get material which is excellent absorbent. Uh, highly efficient for a boat arsenic tree. We know that it is difficult to remove this uh, species of arsenic, and arsenic fire. And uh, quite good efficiency uh, within the wide pH range we tested uh, from 6 to 8.7. Now this material is simply place in, uh, in uh, filters, uh, either pressure or gravity filters. And we apply filtration rates which are a bit on the low side, but not too low, about five meters per hour. Uh, we tested this process in laboratory and also in the field in Bangladesh, uh, Greece, Hungary, Romania, Jordan, and uh, last, last year in Serbia as well. Now, after some uh, runtime, typically, each absorption will result in a breakthrough. Saturation of the capacity, breakthrough will occur, arsenic levels will go above 10 ppb. Now we develop a, a new step for a simple in situ regeneration of the arsenic saturated absorbent, which is based on the use of uh, very cheap, widely available uh, iron salts, ferrous iron salts. Uh, on this slide, you can see a small simulation of the process. So first, we get filtration of water with the arsenic 3 and 5 through the filter bed with IOCS. Arsenic will be absorbed on the filter grains. At one point, we get saturation, so breakthrough of, of arsenic. In the next stage, we try to regenerate filter in situ by dosing uh, ferrous iron under given condition. So we attach ferrous iron uh, above the arsenic, which is, say, attached below. 
In the next step, uh, we go for the oxidation of the uh, adsorbed iron too with the oxygen present in, uh, in uh, feed water, and we get transformation of ferrous iron to ferric iron. And now we have a new layer that can continue absorption of the, of the arsenic. And nicely, arsenic, uh, which is trapped below, will stay, say, on the grains. It will not be, say, taken during the regeneration to the, to the uh, regenerant water out of the, of the filter. Now, maybe for you, interesting, a uh, few results from Serbia, very recent results from Serbia. Uh, we have a pilot plant that you can see on this, on this photo, that's mobile pilot plant, the capacity 15 cubic meters per day. Uh, we operated the plant uh, one year long in the uh, town of Subotica. They have a high level of, uh, of arsenic in groundwater, and they apply conventional treatment. Process applied is, is very simple, aeration, filtration with very short contact time to remove ammonia, to, to remove uh, iron and uh, manganese. And then we have, say, filtration through, through filters with the IOCS as adsorbent. Now, this, this is the result of the last six weeks of operation of the plant. As you can see from the, say, uh, results on the slide, uh, the arsenic level was uh, below of the treated water, filtrate F3, uh, small, small, say, circles. It was consistently uh, below the 10 ppb uh, during this period. And basically what you can see is that by the intensity of regeneration, we can try to say uh, the bring process in the one or the other stage. So the first, first, for example, two weeks we apply very intense regeneration, we have a low arsenic, then we relax the process, and then we got a bit higher arsenic level. Then we again at the end increase the regeneration cycle and we get better results. So we can just fine tune the concentration of arsenic based on the, on the say, targeted water quality. Now, the, the say next, uh, next slide is showing the pilot plant in the village of Bačke Vinogradi, again, uh, municipality of Subotica. Why this village? Because simply, it is the place with the highest arsenic in Serbia. They have uh, up to 300 ppb of arsenic, so that's 30 times above the, the norm. You can see the pilot under the construction, which is now completed and operates already, say, for uh, several months. And the idea is that this pilot uh, becomes the full-scale plant uh, after the, the project uh, completion. Now, results of the arsenic. Uh, uh, these are the first, first say, uh, six weeks of, uh, of operation of the, of the filters. As you can see, even the first filter was giving results which are, say, below level of detection. So it was going very smooth. You can see different uh, marks for uh, treated water quality. These are different, uh, different measurements done by different institutions. And the, the say, green one are uh, Public Health Institute, uh, the, the blue one are done by, by our staff. Now, uh, more, even more recently, uh, Zvenjanin, uh, we can see here that uh, the arsenic levels uh, are between 100 and 170 ppb of arsenic. And I'm showing you results from the, uh, from the say, last uh, two and a half months, where we say uh, really had uh, excellent performance. You can see that the treated water had uh, arsenic which was uh, all the time below 10, in most cases uh, below the level of detection of the te technique applied to analyze arsenic. So it works, works very good. Uh, I guess organics in groundwater are removed through a complex processes, for example, uh, pre-oxidation, uh, coagulation, separation, activated carbon filtration, membrane filtration. This works, costs a lot. Uh, we get byproducts, uh, we get, say, a large volume of sludge, high treatment costs, uh, and not always enough efficiency. So uh, basically, I just wanted to, to show you the results of the, of the non-removal with the IEX unit. This is a modified system, which is basically known, but uh, modified in the Dutch company of Vitens. Uh, simple ion exchange process. Maybe say on this slide you can see differences, where you see that the efficiency of process is uh, very much uh, increase in comparison to, to, a, to a, say, conventional approach, very high filtration rates, uh, very high loads uh, possible of organics possible to, to say, place on the, on the, on the media. Um, maybe say to mention that it is not only theory, uh, but uh, basically the largest Dutch groundwater treatment plant is applying this process. Uh, capacity is 25 million cubic meters per year, so they have this process uh, operating for uh, now already five years. Also, four other plants are, say, now in operation. 
Now just to, to maybe finish the result, results, the results from Zanyanin, same, same place as previous, uh, you see very high level of, uh, of uh, organics in the groundwater, close to 50 uh, ppm of uh, chemical 4 consumption. And you can see that is a, uh, the uh, absorption on IX system was really working very good and we could uh, very easily say uh, keep it uh, below, below say the 10 ppb by applying uh, regenerations, in this case once per about, uh, about seven to eight days. Okay, this is the concentrate uh, coming out of the, of the regeneration system, uh, which is nowadays uh, being used as a byproduct for uh, other industries in the Netherlands. Now, conclusion, I just want to, to say that the basically absorptive removal uh, of metals and organics is an interesting new alternative uh, that has potential and that should be taken uh, in consideration when particular, say, groundwater, which is complex in nature, should be treated. I guess this process uh, requires almost no chemicals, except uh, regeneration chemicals, and also uh, it is uh, highly efficient in terms of the use of the water produced uh, for, uh, for example, backwashing. About 2% maximum is sufficient for uh, all internal water uses. Okay. Just to mention, the, to thank to numerous PhD and, and MSc fellows at UNESCO IG, to our lab staff, and also to, to the TENS uh, and Dutch, Dutch government that provided support uh, to, to this research line. Thank you for your attention.